Good morning, Shady Oaks Baptist Church. This is Tyler, the student pastor, and I wanted to update you on some things that are happening this summer in student ministry. The first thing we have is Vacation Bible School. This is June 7th through the 11th. Now, historically, this is a children's ministry only event, but for Shady Oaks, this is a church-wide event. So there will be something every single night for student ministry um, throughout that week. Our next major event is Camp Clyde. This is June 18th to the 22nd. Registration for camp will start this week. And so look online, register your students, get them signed up so they can go to camp with us. I'm very excited camp will be an amazing time this summer. And then throughout the summer, every Wednesday night when we're not having vacation Bible school or camp, we will have something every Wednesday, whether that's here on site uh, or if it is off site somewhere, we will have something going on for your student ministry. So stay up to date by um, connecting to our, our remind text or following us on Instagram for all our updates. And now we're gonna pass it over to Christy for some more information. Good morning, Shady Oaks family. It is awesome to be able to join you this morning and talk about some things coming up in children's ministry and family ministry. Before I dive into some summer events, I do wanna let you know that on April 18th, we will be having a family dedication service. This is for parents and children. It can be children of infants, beautiful new babies, or you might have older children that you have not had the opportunity to commit them to the Lord and to dedicate them to God. If you are interested in doing that on April 18th, reach out to me at the church office, send me an email, and I will give you some more information. Summer is going to be amazing because last summer we did nothing. But this year we get to bring it all back, and I'm very excited about that. Tyler mentioned Vacation Bible School. It is the week of June 7th through 11th and happens in the evening. That event is not just for children. It is for all ages, from babies all the way through senior adults. We will have something that you will love as you grow closer to Christ. Um, in children's ministry in the summertime, we have what we call Whatever Wednesdays, and those are Wednesday evenings that whatever can happen. We have four of those scheduled this year. There is one scheduled for June 23rd, uh, that evening from 6 to 8, and that will be a bike night event. This is for children entering kindergarten through 7th grade. Then on July 7th, we will have a water event for those same age kids from 6 to 8. And we have one scheduled in August for the 11th that is a back to school bash for kiddos. But the one I want to really highlight here is a Whatever Wednesday Friends and Family Edition that we will be having on Wednesday evening, July 21st. That night from six to eight, we want you to gather up your friends, gather up your family, come form some teams, and let's play some games and have ice cream together and just enjoy a good summer evening. The last summer event that I want to talk to you about is children's camp. Children's camp is for kiddos who are currently in third through sixth grades. Those children get to come up to the church, load up in a bus, and we take off to Riverbend Retreat Center, which is in Glen Rose, Texas. While there, we have times of worship and times of Bible study. We swim in the lake and bounce each other off the blob. We swim in the pool. We play muddy field games. We have an overall fantastic time where children are poured into. They get to learn about Jesus and grow closer to him, and we all get to grow our relationships with each other. If you have children that age or grandchildren that age or friends who have kids that are in third through sixth grade, I want to encourage you to reach out and let's talk about children's camp because it is an amazing thing. We are so excited to be back to a busy schedule, serving God and serving each other this summer.
Good morning, Shady Oaks Baptist Church. Thank you, thank you so much for uh, joining us online today. Uh, the sanctuary is starting to come together, and uh, there's a lot of excitement going on in, in what this place is going to look like when we come back on the 28th. So I hope that you are excited about what's going on here, but I'm very excited about bringing you the message this morning to spend some time opening up God's Word. And uh, again, so thankful for you guys to join us today. Uh, as we get going this morning, I want to just give you an opportunity to uh, just give uh, as you're tithe and offering to the Lord. And uh, I know that uh, we're not here in the building today, but you can definitely go to shadyoaks.org and uh, uh, slash give and be able to give online. Of course, you can drop by the office sometime this week, but any way you can give back to the Lord, we appreciate it. And so glad that you're there. Uh, I just want to open us up in a time of prayer. And uh, again, thank you guys for tuning in and uh, let's get started. Father in heaven, I thank you for today. I thank you for uh, just to be able the, the ability to join uh, via YouTube today and, and the technology that allows us to do this. Lord, I pray that you would just inhabit uh, the airways as this goes out today. And Lord, that as we sit in our living rooms and are sit in our homes, Lord, that we would uh, be connected to you today. Lord, I pray that as we open up your word, that we continue to, to hear from you. And Lord, that this whole day is a celebration of what you have in store for us. So Lord, we love you and we praise you and we thank you. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey guys, let's sing to the Lord now. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us online at ShadyOaks.org. We are so glad that you've chosen to worship with us online. Let's all stand and sing and worship together. my past behind I'm setting my heart and mind on you Jesus I'm reaching my hands to yours believing there's so much more knowing that all you have in store for me is good it's good I'm leaving my doubts behind I'm giving my hopes and dreams to you Jesus I'm reaching my hands to yours Believing there's so much more Knowing that all you have in store for me is good It's good Just repeat after me. And I will stand upon your truth. I will stand upon your truth. All my days I'll live for you. All my days I'll live for you. And I will stand upon your truth. I will stand upon your truth. Day is a day you have made. I will. 
Thank you so much for joining us this morning live at ShadyOaks.org. If you want to stand, I invite you to stand. If you want to be seated, be seated. Either way, at home, I hope you just continue to sing and worship together. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Let's sing that verse together again. My hope is built on nothing less 
than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of all. When darkness seems to hide His face, I rest on His. I rest on His unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. My anchor holds within the veil. I stand on cornerstone. Thank you again for choosing to worship with us this morning. Well, all right, guys, if you have a Bible handy, uh, you want to open up to Hebrews chapter 9 today. We're going to be visiting there and staying in that this morning, taking a look at how Jesus Christ is the better sacrifice, an opportunity for us to take this morning and really uh, begin looking at pursuing this. And so we'll be in chapter 9 of Hebrews, uh, primarily verses 11 through 28, but we'll be spinning there. But I have a question for you real quick. Have you ever thought about why Jesus is the best option for eternal life in heaven? Have you ever thought about that as why is there no other way? I mean, Jesus himself said in John, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and no one gets to heaven except through him. But is that really the best way? Have you ever thought about why it is? And I think that one of the things that we'll see today in opening this passage is taking a look at how the old system that was in place to atone for sin uh, was temporary. Uh, but what Jesus provided for us led, led it to be a permanent substitute and atonement for our sin. You see, the old system of, of atoning for sin was, was the idea that you would go to the temple or the tabernacle and then you would offer up an animal uh, to be killed on your behalf. And so 
And going to the tabernacle, uh, you have to understand that the tabernacle was God's presence with man. It was built in this uh, very beautiful, ornate building. Uh, The descriptions are listed in Scripture. You can take a look at that and really see. But it's this amazingly built building and, and beautiful but it was to represent God's presence here on earth with man. And, and what a cool thing that is for us to take a look at and, and, and think about today because uh, the, the way the tabernacle was set up, it was set up for, for you to have stages to get to God. And one of the things that I, I want to make sure that we know and understand today is that the tabernacle is the precursor to Jesus showing up. And we'll, we'll get to that in a little bit. But, but the tabernacle is God's presence, but yet uh, God's presence was located in just one section of it. And so you had really three main sections of the sanctuary. You had the outer courts, and then you had the holy place, which was an inner side thing. And only the high priests, uh, the chief priests could go to this during the year. And this was a place that you could go in and there was a preparation, uh, the Lord's Supper, and uh, just an opportunity for you to offer sacrifices. Incense was being burned in this area. And then, and then of course, the Holy of Holies was the place that really was the place that uh, was where the God's presence was. And this is where the Ark of the Covenant was there. And inside the Ark were, were elements that, uh, that, that they believed were, were God's presence. It was, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the tablets that the, the Ten Commandments were written on it, um, Aaron's staff. I mean, and there's all kinds of things in, in, in this idea that, that point pictures to uh, the presence of God. But the way this was set up is that the high priest was only allowed to go in to this uh, area of the, uh, holy, of the temple, the tabernacle, in the Holy of Holies, one day a year, and it was done on the Day of Atonement. And uh, what they would do is that it was such a holy considered place that they would actually tie a rope around the priest's leg so that if he were to die because of unforgiven sin or anything like that, that they would act, go back and go and get him. They would actually drag him out because only one person in it went in one day on the year, and that was the Day of Atonement. But one of the things that was a very important part of this process was this idea of that there was a blood sacrifice that was a requirement for uh, sin to be atoned for. And so an animal had to be slaughtered. And, and I, I just I can just imagine the temple itself was probably um, very bloody in the sense that the, all of this, uh, the, the, the slicing of the throat and the blood and things like that, it's a very graphic picture. But all of this was done... Uh, to uh, atone for sin. And so you would go and you would present the animal, it would be killed, and then your sins would be forgiven for that year um, or, or the other previous year and going into the next year. But it's interesting that the idea of a blood sacrifice was not something that should be new to the Bible at this point because we see that Adam and Eve uh, lived and they walked and they talked with God, but when they sinned, God sacrificed an animal and provided them with clothing to cover up their nakedness. You know, and so again, a sacrifice had to be made to cover up the sin of, of, of that. And so again, it's, it's interesting to see that, that this, this idea of a blood sacrifice or a sacrifice being made to atone for sin is, is all throughout Scripture. And again, when, I, when you hear the story of Cain and Abel about the two gifts that they gave, I mean, obviously, uh, they, they both gave, but only one was pleasing. Well, why was Abel's pleasing and not Cain's? Because, again, you're giving an offering to the Lord to, for forgiveness of sins. Well, Abel brought an animal to be sacrificed, and Cain brought fruit. And to have a sin atoned for, we have to realize and know that a sacrifice has to be made. And so again, back to this idea of the day of atonement, that they would come and, and you would have the chief priests and, and the priests taking these animals, killing them, burning them in the offer, using the blood uh, as a sacrifice in there. And so one of the things that has kind of come down over the last many, many years is this idea that uh, the blood in Scripture is called slaughterhouse theology. And there's some, there's some churches and, and some denominations that are basically trying to remove the blood from the message and the story uh, that's in the Bible. That, that why would we have, why would Jesus be slaughtered by his dad? And again, this is an inappropriate way to think of things because uh, for sin to be atoned for, it had to have a sacrifice. And the only way you could have a sacrifice is if there was death. And because Jesus was perfect, because Jesus was the only way uh, to uh, atone for sins and to get rid of the old system of sacrifice so that it would be once and for all, uh, 
that perfect sacrifice became what is necessary for the forgiveness of sin. And so forgiveness of sin is only possible through the shed blood of an acceptable substitute. Okay, so when you would take your, your lamb to the, to the temple, that was your acceptable substitute, but it only covered your sins for that year. And this was a process that was done every year. But when Jesus Christ came to this earth, he became the perfect substitute for you and for me to have our sins forgiven on the cross. And so he did that by, doing, by, by shedding of his blood. You know, a couple weeks ago, we, we did this idea of, of, of sharing the Lord's Supper and we celebrated the shed blood of Christ and drinking of the juice and the idea that that blood matters and it provides us with the forgiveness that's necessary. And so to kind of understand all of these ideas of the importance of a sacrifice to atone for sin is kind of a backdrop that we want to have in taking a look at our passage here today. And so... We're going to start in verse 11, and I'm going to read that here. So if you want to join me, here we go. It says, But when Christ appeared as the high priest for the good things that have come, then through the greater and more perfect tent, not made with hands, uh, that is, not of, his, of this creation, he entered once into all into all once for all into the holy place, not by means of the blood of goats or calves, but by means of his own blood, thus securing an eternal redemption. And so that's what we talked about, this idea that this is not an animal. This is a perfect sacrifice that Jesus Christ entered into the Holy of Holies and not placed, not in the tabernacle, but in, before God. And his blood created an eternal redemption for sin. For if the blood of goats and bulls uh, and the sprinkling of the defiled persons uh, with ashes uh, for, of, a, of a heifer sanctify for the purification of the flesh, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal, the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish uh, to God, purify our conscience from the dead works to serve the living God? So again, here's this understanding that Jesus provided a better sacrifice than the system that was there. Everyone needs forgiveness of sins because sin has separated us from God. That's an understanding that we have to understand. It, it, the, the sin that entered the world in the garden by Adam and Eve is being passed down to all of us today. And so we have sin in our lives. Now, just as a reminder, sin is anything we think, do, or say that displeases God or things that we don't do that we should do that displeases God. And so I think it's important for us to understand that sin separates us from God. Well, how do we get back to God? And a sacrifice needs to be made. And God's uniform method for the forgiveness of sins has been the shedding of blood. We see that in the tabernacle. We see that in Jesus' body being broken and his blood being shed for you and for me to provide for the payment for sin. Let's see how that continues here in Romans chapter 6, verse 23. It says, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is, uh, is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The wages of sin is death. Death must be, be take part because of sin. And so do you want our death to be that, or do you want Jesus' death to come in and be the substitute for us in that? In Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11, it says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given it to you for on the altar to make atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that makes atonement by the life. And so again, here's the Levitical laws that are out there laying it down. That blood is the way, is the method that must be given to atone for sin. So you can either die yourself and hope that works out. Or you can have Jesus Christ's blood be in your place and substitute that. Jesus' blood atones for the sins of the world. The idea that his blood was sufficient. He was the perfect sacrifice. He is the better sacrifice. Let's continue the story in verse 15. It says, therefore, he is the mediator of a new covenant so that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance since a death has occurred that redeems them from the transgressions committed under the first covenant. For where, there, where a will is involved, the death of the one who made it must be established. For I will for a will takes effect only at death, since it is not in force as long as the one who has made it is alive. Therefore, not even the first covenant was inaugurated without blood. For when every commandment of the law had been declared by Moses to all of the people, he took the blood of the calves and goats uh, with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled blood, the books itself, on all the people, saying, this is the blood of the covenant that God commanded for you. And in the same way, he sprinkled with blood both the tent and all of the vessels used in worship. Indeed, under the law, almost everything is purified with blood. 
And without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. Think about that for a second. I've talked about it. I've kind of stated it this morning. But without the shed blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. And so if we're going to stand before a holy and righteous God, the only way that happens is if that there is blood shed for us. And that blood was shed by Jesus Christ. So let's take a look at what we have here in these verses. First of all, we see that there's a promised inheritance through the will. Okay, so think about this. There's a promised inheritance through a will. And that will is that Jesus Christ died. And by his payment of the penalty, we inherit heaven. We get to go to heaven because of what Jesus Christ did for us by putting our faith and trust in there. And of course, the only way that happens is once Jesus dies. And so the death through, we, the will happens through the death of Jesus Christ. And so the plan that's placed for, in place for us is that we will get what is promised to us upon Jesus' death. Well, we did that. He did that 2,000 years ago, and he died. And because he died for you and for me, we get an opportunity to, uh, to take the substitute of him dying in our place for the forgiveness of sins. But we also see that there's a new covenant that's involved because we see the covenant that Abraham was talking about was the idea of the old covenant. And the old covenant was, was established by God, but the new covenant is the forgiveness of sins through the death of Jesus Christ. And so this new covenant is that if you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, your sins will be forgiven and the covenant you will have with God will be a new relationship established through the righteousness that Jesus Christ affords us by his shed blood. You see, in Luke chapter 22, verse 20, often used as a verse we use for the Lord's Supper, it says, And likewise, the cup, after they had eaten, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. Think about that for a second. The idea that Jesus is symbolizing the, 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 the blood that he will shed for us is the new covenant because it provides a way for sin to be forgiven for you and for me we see a very powerful part of this verse in verse 22. It says, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. Guys, this is where it comes down to. This is why we understand that Jesus is the best way because God's standard is perfection and we can't live to that. We cannot be perfect. We can hope, you know, and try to have a few moments or a few seconds as perfect, but we can't live a perfect life. And so we're going to sin. We're going to fall short of the plan, of the glory that God has set before us. And so because of that, we need that sin to be atoned for. And without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. There is no atonement for sin. Think about that. The only way we get to heaven is through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. That's why he's the best way to get to eternal life. He's the only way to get to eternal life because no other substitute works. No other sacrifice was perfect that can stand in the place. You see, Christ was and is our, is the better sacrifice. He's the sacrifice that sets it up for us and lets us say that his sacrifice provides the forgiveness for you and for me. Let's continue on here in Hebrews 9, verse 23. It says, thus it is necessary for the copies of the heavenly things to be purified with these rites, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. For Christ has entered not into the holy place made with hands, which are copies of the true things, but into heaven itself. Now it appears, now now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf. Nor was it to offer himself repeatedly as the high priest entered the holy place every year with blood, not of his own. For then he would have to be, suffer repeatedly since the foundation of the world. But As it is, he has appeared once for all at the end of the age to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And just as it is appointed for man to die once, and after that comes judgment, so Christ has been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. You see, Jesus replaced the tabernacle sacrifice system once and for all. You see, the tabernacle was God's presence with us. Jesus became God with us. His plan and his purpose was for not only are we to have a sacrifice that he made once and for all, but that sacrifice is eternal. It is forever. 
I think it's important for us to see that, that when we're, we're living in the world today and we begin talking to people about why they need Jesus, we need to make sure that they know and understand that they need Jesus because he is the best sacrifice and he's the only sacrifice that accepted by God for the forgiveness of sin. Anything that we try to do is just filthy rags according to God. If we try to offer up something of ourselves, it's going to be muddied by all the sin in our lives. And we can't offer a perfect sacrifice of our lives. And so we need the perfect sacrifice that is Jesus Christ. You see, when Jesus Christ returns, uh, he will save those who are eagerly waiting for him. Think about that. When you are eagerly waiting for Christ's return, uh, it is because your sins are forgiven. Think about it. If you know that God's going to come back someday and or Jesus is going to come back someday and he's going to come and you don't have an assurance that you're going to heaven, you would fear that day. You would worry about that day. Am I going to go to heaven? I'm going to go to heaven. But, but the sacrifice that Jesus Christ made for you and for me affords us that opportunity to be waiting for his return. To think about that. When he returns, we want to be with him in heaven. What a great way for us to think and, and to dream about the opportunity that is here before us. The whole plan and purpose of this is not for us to be, uh, you know, wondering, but it's to know without a doubt, without a, a worry, that the better sacrifice was made by Jesus Christ because it takes our place on the cross, our place that is there because of our sin. And God looks at that and he says, sin's forgiven. In, 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 in 2 Corinthians, it talks about chapter 5, it talks about Jesus, God made him who knew no sin to become sin on our behalf that we might have the righteousness of God. All the sin was placed upon God. Of our sin was placed upon Jesus and it was forgiven. And because of that, we have the righteousness of God. We have the opportunity to stay today that we know for certain that our sins are forgiven. So let's take this and let's apply this and let's put it all together this morning. First of all, do you know your sins are forgiven by the shed blood of Jesus Christ? Do you know that? We've talked today about the sacrificial system. The only way that sin is going to be forgiven is through the shed blood of a perfect sacrifice. And Jesus Christ did that once and for all. It was done, it was settled, and his sacrifice gives us and provides us the opportunity to have our sins forgiven. Do you know that your sins are forgiven by the shed blood of Jesus Christ? If you know that today, great. Are you trusting in him alone for eternal life in heaven? You know, guys, there's still this debate on, 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 in a lot of people's lives. Of, is, am I good enough? You know, maybe, maybe if I live a good life and, and maybe the good and the bad and the scales at the end, if, if I have more good than bad, then maybe, maybe, I'll, uh, maybe I'll, be, I'll, I'll, I'll turn out okay. But God's scale is perfection. And as we saw today that Jesus Christ is the better sacrifice, he is the only sacrifice that pleases God and atones for the sins that we've committed. And so today, we need to not just play around with that. We need to ask yourself the questions. Do you know your sins are forgiven? And are you trusting in Jesus Christ alone for heaven today? If you're not doing that today, you need to take care of it. I know that you're not here today and I'm not with you, but I, I pray that as you, you're sitting there today, if, if you're realizing inside something in your heart that you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, that you settle that issue today. You don't play the game anymore. That you put your faith and trust in him because his sacrifice pays for your sin and that's the only thing that God's going to accept. If you need to put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, will you do that today? God's word says that if we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that he is Lord, that we're saved, that we get heaven and our sins will be forgiven because we have to acknowledge that we're a sinner, that we've fallen short of God's plan and because we're a sinner, we need somebody to save us and his name is Jesus Christ. And so if you haven't done that today, will you cry out to him right now? Will you say, God, I'm a sinner I believe that your, your sacrifice paid for my sin. I believe that you're gonna take me to heaven when I die because you are my Lord. Will you do that today? If you haven't done that, you need to do that. If you wanna talk further about that, please reach out to the church office. We'd be glad to talk to you more about that. But, but ultimately, this whole conversation of Jesus being a better sacrifice only matters if he's a sacrifice for you and for me. And we know that. Not just, well, it's a good thought out there. It's something, no, but it's here inside of us. So if, if you've done that already, if you know that you've put your faith and trust in Christ, you know that your sins are forgiven by the shed blood of Jesus Christ, that's great. But are you living your life in thankfulness that Christ's sacrifice for sin atones for your sin once and for all? 
You know, guys, it's so easy for us to beat ourselves up over allowing sin to come into our lives and, and the fact that we don't uh, you know, keep a short list of sin, we allow sins to pile up and so therefore we think we're, we're, we're not worthy of who God is. But there's nothing we can do, guys. There's nothing we can do that's gonna separate us from God because his sacrifice, his sacrifice atones for your sins once and for all. And so by putting our faith and trust in him, there's nothing that's going to separate us from that love, from his presence. Are we living our lives thankful for that today? Are we, are we, are we, are we, are we, are we in such gratitude for, for the Lord for doing this in our lives? Guys, it's, it's definitely something that we have to spend some time thinking about a little bit more, probably because we probably think about it, but are we thankful for it? Because when we're thankful for things, we live differently, we act differently, we do things differently. And I would pray that we are living a life thankful for what Jesus Christ has done for you and for me. Guys, my last question for you this morning is that since, since sin separates us from God, are you prepared to share with somebody how his sacrifice covers their sins and provides for them the inheritance of heaven for all eternity? Guys, I want us to know this answer for ourselves, but we need to be able to take this answer that is Jesus Christ to the world around us. And guys, we've been talking a while about sharing the gospel. We've been talking a while about communicating the gospel, but, but are we prepared to share that Jesus Christ is the perfect, better sacrifice for the sins? And because he is that, he takes away the sins and we get heaven because of what he did for you and for me. Guys, this world's religious system is going to be pushing this idea that you got to do this, 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 you got all this list of things you got to do. But Jesus Christ says, done. D O N E. It is done. That's why he said it's finished. It's not something we got to continue to work at. His sacrifice for you and for me paid it all. Are we able to communicate that with the people that are around us? Can we help them to see that they can't be good enough to get to heaven? Only by the shed blood of Jesus Christ can they get to heaven. And so guys, I pray that you just continue to, to be thinking on this and to be thinking about the sacrifice that Jesus Christ prepared for us by dying for you and for me on a cross. And I pray that you're thankful for it. I pray that you know that your sins are forgiven and that your faith and trust is in Jesus Christ alone. And I pray that you're ready and able to share that message to the people around us. Guys, again, if you need help, if you want to talk about that, please, please, please reach out to me at the church or the staff. We'd be love to talk to you more about it and how we can continue to push each other and encourage one another to share the full message of Jesus Christ, that he died for you, for forgiveness of sins, his sacrifices once and for all. He rose three days later. He sits at the right hand of the Father. And because he sits at the right hand of the Father, he's interceding on our behalf. And one day he's going to return and he's going to take us home to heaven. But in the meantime, he's called us to live a life for him. There's a tremendous promise in there. There's ter tremendous reward in there. And I pray that we're able to not only live it and know it, but tell people about it. Guys, let's pray. Father in heaven, I thank you for today. I thank you that we are gathered here electronically in, 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 in preparations for our, our, our sanctuary to be improved with better lighting and just visual aspects, Lord. But I pray that each and every one of us, Lord, as we sit here and we've gone through today, Lord, that we know and that we realize that, Father, your sacrifice that you provided for us in your son, Jesus, is enough to cover our sins. And, Lord, because of that, we can live a life pure and holy in your sight because of the shed blood that, of Jesus Christ. Lord, we can't do it ourselves. We need a Savior, and his name is Jesus. Lord, we can't just sit there and go through the motions. We need to be thankful for all that he's done for us and to live our life in gratitude for that asking him to live through us and to live in us each and every day so that we're able to go out and share that message to anybody that we get a chance to talk to and share this amazing story of how Jesus Christ became a sacrifice for me. Lord, help us to do that. Help us to walk in that. Lord, we love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Guys, again, if there's anything that 
I can do as your lead pastor or the staff can do to help you to, to walk in this or to, to live this out, uh, let us know. Reach out to us. You can call us at the church office. You can email us. However you can, reach out to us. We'll be glad to get to know more and more of how we can truly see this message becoming alive in our lives and alive in each of us and encouraging one another to do that more and more and more and more. Love you guys. Have a great week. I look forward to seeing you here next week.